Josh Green here for Totes and Tales. Delighted to be joined for the first time in, I've just been reminded, a long time by Richard Ashdown. Richard, how are you? I'm good. It has been a while, Josh. We're good to see you. And yourself. Um, news broke last week. WDF World Championships going back to the home of World Darts at the Lakeside. It's terrific news for so many. And it's very, very exciting to see it back at the Lakeside. Yeah, we're delighted. I think I can speak on behalf of the WDF executive, everybody that's been involved over the last few months and indeed the last couple of years now, that one of our main objectives was to get the premier event within the system back to the lakeside. Mm. And how important is it that venue has a home and has an event there? Because obviously not so long ago, the Indigo was, was taken up as a the the venue for the premier event and mm. to get back to the home of world darts and obviously the fans there are uh, are different to, to any other fans in world darts it's such a huge thing isn't it yeah i think it is and it's nothing against the indigo itself i've worked there on a few occasions doing uh, legend shows and, and and it's a terrific venue mm. i just feel uh for the the pilgrimage that has been established over so many years like you have in so many other sports i think it's so important that the lakeside was the place where the, the main event took place. Uh, wherever else we go and wherever else we develop w with the WDF, uh, we can go to new venues, we can go to new countries even. Mm. But I think having the World Championship, uh, both for the fans that attend it on a regular basis and also for the players that aspire to play there, I think it's really important that it's at lakeside. You mentioned the players there. It's a, a real... It's a real thing that all the players aspire to go to in terms mm. of a world championship. You need something to lead up to. Mm. You need an end goal. Yep. And the world championship of the Lakeside has been that for so many years for so many players. How important is it from a player standpoint that they've got something to aim for? Well, I hope it's important. And it's been the biggest question and you can't blame them. over, mm. over the, Especially dur during the pandemic because everything's been on hold. What they've wanted to know from the WDF is, is there a world championship? When is it? Where is it? That was why it's been so important to get that news out right away. As soon as you bring that news out, there's a hundred other questions. If we wait to answer all of those questions, we then couldn't announce the World Championship. I think it's really important under the current climate and with things hopefully returning to normal as we go through the year, that everybody knows when the World Championship is and where it is. And we saw over the last week or so, over the weekend, first WDF ranked events get, getting underway. Um, yeah. And we're starting to get a, a feel. We saw some tables in terms of qualification. It's still six months to go, so a long way to go for so many players. But uh, they're starting to get a feel of what they need to do to get to the World Championships. Yeah, I mean, the key thing was we announced the new ranking system at the start of 2020. There yeah. was less than three months play. Those points have effectively carried over. Mm. The WDF operate the ranking system on a one-year cycle. But the early 2020 events effectively become the early 2021 events that haven't taken place. Mm -hmm. So everything from January 2020 stands and from now on the ranking is reopened. We've been uh, speaking with the member nations throughout this whole pandemic about the situations. Because as you can imagine, with 70 plus member countries, the state of play in every single country is different in terms of what's allowed and what isn't. And that's why we took the decision over the last few months that we wouldn't rank anything. And we've taken this decision now in the summer, June, July and August. It's relatively quiet on the tour. Mm -hmm. So it gives everybody a chance just to get things going. A few bronze events here and there. Yeah. The big events in terms of points begin in September, where hopefully we have a much clearer picture and, uh, and the world is a bit more open. Things are turning again for everyone. Uh, September really booms with things like the Dutch Open, the England Open. Mm -hmm. And then we go into October with the British Open, the Denmark Open, there's the Welsh Open. There's a lot going on. Uh, the big events that we're all used to. And quite rightly, there's there's always talk about the 128 in the professional mm. in the professional darts corporation or the, the top pro players, but there are so many more players and so much more to the world of darts and they're going to get their chance, as you say, in not just a world championship possibly, but towards the back end of the year and start of December, you've got World Masters over in the Netherlands. There's, there's so much on offer for these players now, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. The PDC um, cater for... The 128 professional players, the, the WDF openly uh, recognise that. And I think we're getting to the point where the WDF even endorsed that. I think it's a great thing for the sport of darts that the PDC are in such good shape for the professional players. Where the WDF sit is, I use the phrase, the 128 million other players. 
I don't know the exact numbers worldwide, of course, but you know what I'm saying. We want this to be an opportunity for every man, every woman, every youth player. Um, there's disability darts within the WDF. So everyone else that plays the game, in whichever country you live, there's an opportunity for you to progress and, and be world champion. That's what the WDF is all about. And we've mentioned how great it is for darts as a whole, going back to the lakeside. But from a, a personal standpoint, from your point of view, how great will it be to be back on that stage and back in a place that has been called your, your second home, really, <laughs> hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't think anything's sort of officially been decided because of the hard work that's gone into putting the tournament back in place. But in the back of my mind, of course, I, you're the first person that's asked me about it, Josh, about returning myself. I would love to see myself and the team of referees that... that that people knew from 2019 to, mm. to return in, in, in 2022. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely looking forward to it. Um, there's an atmosphere there like no other, as so many people say. It would be a pleasure if I'm the one to bring the players onto the stage in January. And just on to the, the last BDO World Champion in Wayne Warren. He didn't really have the chance to parade the trophy and have that year. He's going to get the chance to hopefully defend a world championship and it'll be a, a big moment for him to get back upon that stage with fans and defend a world championship. Yeah, we felt it really important that we give both Wayne Warren and Makuru Suzuki the opportunity to return as defending champions. We know that the, the people behind the championships are now different. And, and there's this kind of year that's a drop stitch, if you like, for the Lakeside in 2020. But that's of no fault of Wayne Warren and Makuru Suzuki. So they, of course, head the list of invitations that go out to, to return in 2022. And there's obviously six months-ish, six, seven months until hopefully we get back up on that stage. What what can we expect to see in those next six, seven months? And will there be any, any more news coming out that we, uh, we should be looking out for? I think the key thing was, of course, establishing the majors. The news was already out about the World Masters that's going to take place for the mm -hmm. first time in the Netherlands mm -hmm. at a brilliant venue where the Dutch Open is already hosted. We want to make that, in its prime, bigger than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. In December, it might be difficult to do that because of global travel. The event will take place unless it's absolutely impossible to run it. But in terms of the global attendance, that might be difficult. We see that event being bigger than ever before. We and we want to have more than a thousand players in the World Masters. We really want it to be the championship that's for all of the nations, and everyone has the chance. At that event is also the World Championship qualifier, so that's something to really look forward to. The NDB uh, do a terrific job in running the Dutch Open, which has been postponed to September, by the way. So, mm -hmm. if that can run to its full strength again, you're going to see some spectacular stuff in the autumn. Thank you very much for joining me, Richard. Really appreciate it. Nice to catch up once again. And I'm sure we, we won't leave it a couple of years this time, will we? Yeah, please, though. Thank you.